forgot to record. Yeah. So before going to before we start the lesson, let's run our mind freely. Okay. So Ted is that someone. It's been shot in. Uh, he's been shot in a wagon with the elephant. So meanwhile, you. I want you to think about what do you think will happen, and also how would you feel. And the, the third question is, uh, will he be? Will he ever get back home again, or will he takes this opportunity to start a new life? So these three questions keep it in your mind to think of. And while we're going to read the story here. So this story itself is a fiction story. What is a fiction? Is something is real or something is not real? Not true. It is not, not real. True. Not real. Okay, so the story is a great elephant chase by Gillian Cross. He, she, he wrote that one. But the following extract, uh, following is an excerpt from a novel called The Great Elephant. Okay, it's between in the United States in around 19th century. It's about an unhappy 15 years boy who called Ted. So now you know who is that Ted, who lives with his aunt, who treats him like a servant. And also there is another character here called Esther, which is a, a cruel housemaid, always trying to put him in a trouble. So uh, on this particular day in the story, Ted has been sent to the store. And before the story happened in that Ted and Elephant, he sent, has been sent to the story but on the way, there's something amusing he has seen. So uh, there was an elephant, it was the, the visiting showman with an elephant. So what was the scenery about? It was the showman was, uh, a showman has fooled the, the audience that uh, uh, let them believe that uh, he has a magical elephant remedy, pretending that uh, he uh, come out with one little girl who is, who is crippled and then the elephant will put him up, put her up and down, and then the girl will be unconscious. When the, the, uh, the showman gave her like an elephant remedy, the girls will wake up out of consciousness, and then he will, uh, at that time, he will not be crippled. That was the, the show that Ted has seen. But Ted uh, waits, when he around, uh, waits for the show, he saw that the Esther, that the, uh, the cool housemaid around there, so he tried to hide from his, from her side. Then, then how the story starts. Okay, now look at this part here. The story is going to start over here. Uh, let me have the spotlight here. So he meant to duck down behind the railroad wagon, but then out of corner of his eye, he saw Esther turns in his direction. Without thinking, he bolted up the, the ramp into the wagon. His feet dubbed on the wooden floor and his heart thudded harder. Desperate for, the cover, for a cover, he squeezed in among the hay bales at the bar, far end, pulling them around to hide him. At every moment, he expected to see Esther in the doorway, but pointing her finger spitefully at him, but she didn't come. It was a crowd, it was a crowd that trapped him. Suddenly, everyone surged back from the depot towards the wagon. Ted, Ted's hiding place, which had been deserted, was surrounded by people and the showman was shouting to them. Okay, now, I would like you to uh, talk about this paragraph. What is this paragraph about? What was this beginning of the story about? So can you give me the short, brief notes? I'm going to write it down over here. Okay, what is the story about? Ted, starts with the Ted, right? Yes. Ted has been cited. What does that mean, cited? By Esther. She, uh, uh -huh, Esther. Who is the Esther? The right. cool housemaid. So then that's how the story begins. Now they'll continue. What is this about? Very short and briefly, please. Okay. He, um, he was so afraid. He was afraid and? Yeah. Then he, he found a place to hide. I tried to, he, I tried to get away from her, get away and 
found a place to hide. What kind of place was it? What? What kind of place was that? It was Bay Hills. Do you know what does that mean, Bay Hill? No. You know the you know that animal they eat that the grass dry. For example, now uh, we have sheep, right? We buy that the bay, that the, the dried yes. grass food. Yes. That's what we call a bay. Hail is that like a, a package? Do you remember yes. now when you go to the shop, there will be like some square shaped animal, like uh, the grass yes. for an animal. Yes. We call yes. It, we call that bay hail. Okay. okay. So then what happened? Then, um, then crowd, the, uh, crowd moved to, to his hidden place. place. Okay, this is the story, uh, part of the of the story. What is it about? Okay, let's go to our story now. Here, okay. next page. Okay. Be patient. Be patient. Oh, what happened? Be patient, good people. I will certainly sell you some of the, my elephant's remedy. But first, I must put the elephant in here. You know, here's... So a heavy foot thudded on the, onto the rump, peering through a gap in the hay bales. Uh, uh, Ted saw an enormous black shape blocking the doorway that it took one step towards him and then hesitated, flapping its ears. Move up, hush, the snowman said, impatiently, but move up. Ted saw the outline of the showman's short, sharp stick. The elephant still hesitated, and the stick jumped at its great flank. Hush, stumbled up the ramp and into the wagon. The next moment, the ramp closed with a clang, shutting out of most of the light. Ted heard the lock click and then shuffling, hum out of the crowd, moving back towards the depot. He was locked in it with the elephant. Okay, now, uh, where is the, our, okay, here. Let's move the, you see, I have here mistake. Uh, the word is, hey, Bail, not bay hail. Uh, how can I erase it? Okay. Oh, it's gone. Okay, now. So the second part, what was it about? Not which we have right now. Guys? The showman. Uh-huh. Um... He, the showman entered the, um, like, no. no. Showman the said that he, he will sell some of his elephant remedy. Okay. Remedy, remedy. That's why, where he's leading the, the elephants to? He led the, showman led the elephants to where? To the to its wagon. Yes. Okay. And then what happened? The elephant entered and locked. But with who? With Ted. With Ted. That means basically Ted also been locked in the uh, wagon, right? The wagon, yes. Okay. So uh, this is it. Next one. Let's walk to our story. Here, it says, the smell of it filled his nostrils, and its movement rustled the hay that surrounded him. Ted covered in the hay, in the hay trying not to breathe. But the elephant was 
tugging at the bales and the reaching round them with its trunk. He could feel the bales move. Steady there, steady hush. Tad muttered as if he were talking to a nervous horse. Okay, what it says now. Uh, this part is. This part tells us. That um, uh, the elephant was in the wagon after being locked down. Is that is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. So our story again. Here. In answer, the long great trunk snacked around the nearest bale and found Tad's head. The delicate end of the trunk moved slowly over his face, from top to bottom, and then from side to side, feeling the shape of his nose and the curve of his mouth. Curve of his mouth. It was damp, gentle, gentler than any human hand that Ted could remember. It brushed his closed eyelids and a strange rumbling come from the elephant, low and soothing, like the purring of a contented cat. Ted kept absolutely still, barely breathing. A second later, Hush turned away and they began to pull at the hay. Stiffing, stuffing it into his, his mouth and reaching for more. He was like a huge wall between Tad and the door, immovable until the showman came back. Perhaps it was the best to wait for that. Tad settled himself in his corner and let his eyes grow accustomed to the darkness. But the showman was long time. Then hum of voice round the depot went on, on and on, and the air inside the wagon grew hotter as the sun got up. Slowly, lured by the elephant's steady chewing, Ted let his eyelids close. By the time snowman returned, Ted was fast asleep, curled up in the hay. No noise from the door woke him because he didn't open it. He simply called to the elephant. Steady there, hush. We are on the way now. Steady, boy. It was the crash of the metal that woke Ted as the wagon was coupled onto a freight train. And by then it was too late. Hush uh, shuffled and stumped and thumpered, uh, thrump, uh, trumpered as the car was hauled out of the siding. And no one heard Ted yelling and knocking on the side. There was a long whistle and a jerk. Then the locomotive pulled the train out of this depot and away down the valley. After 15 years of being watched and picked on and pointed at, Pat slid out of his town, hometown so secretly that no one except an elephant knew he had, been, he had gone. So, that's the end of the story. So now, how the story continued over here? Could you tell me briefly? Okay. Okay, what happened from the second part? In answer, the long gray trunk. Uh, the elephant, what is the elephant's name? Uh, hush. Uh-huh, hush. Investigated, uh, I mean, discovered, covered, Ted and investigated him. How? His trunk. And what has happened? What else has happened?
He was behaving in a gentle way. Uh -huh. He behaved. Oh, sorry. He behaved gentle and knew that there was nothing. Nothing. To, okay, gen, uh, gentle and how can we express that as well? Investigated, behaved gentle and continued. He's eating. Okay, what else happened in the part of the story? The wagon gets hotter. And also, the boy fast slept. Until when? Yes. Until the wagon has joined to freight train. And what happened? Once the train moved, uh, moved, Ted has left his home town. Is that the brief of the story? Is that enough? Do you want to add or do you want to shorten the story? Guys? No, it's enough. Is that enough? Yeah. Okay. okay, so let's move on to our story itself. Now from the previous page, before we start the read, I told you to think of some question, right? So here, what do you think will happen? What was your answer in this part? Question number one. What do you think will happen? What do you think will happen? Well, happen. What is your answer? Let's give the answer, guys. Okay, guys. What will happen in the story? Maybe he will, maybe he will continue with the elephant. Continue. Uh, continue. The life, uh, his life, his life with the elephant and maybe elephant and the showman, right? Probably. This is our guess. This is wild guess. Okay. So question number two is about how would you feel? Question number two. Here, how would you feel? What is your answer for that? How would you feel if you left like this? And also if you're going to continue life like this uh, with elephant and with the showman, how would you feel? It is your point of um, view. Maybe I'll feel like um, good because uh, Ted will continue his life with the uh, elephant uh -huh. and maybe he, he loves him uh -huh. continue the life better with the elephant and love him okay okay so another point i just want to have an extra how do you think he felt uh, that when he left the hometown, now that the, the, the freight train has been, has moved and started, uh, so there is no way to, that he can get out. So at that moment, how, would he, uh, what, how did he feel? Yes. How he, do you think he felt? He, uh, he felt sad. And what else? 
afraid more likely, right? Because he has no yes. idea what's coming. Yes. Afraid, or let's say frightened. Yes. Okay, what else he would be? A more likely and clueless what to do next. Yes. Okay, so now question number three. Our question number here, three is here. Will he ever yes. get back home again? Will he ever get back home again? And or will he take this opportunity, take this opportunity to start new to start a new life? Yes. What do you think? He will, he I will think think he start a new life. Ah. Uh, yes. I think most definitely, right? Yes. Definitely. Play. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Is that correct spelling? How do you spell definitely? Definitely. No. Definitely. No, I don't. Definitely. He will start a new life. A brand new life. Brand new life. Life. Okay. What else? You think he will come back home ever again? Will he get back home again ever? Maybe, but after a while. Uh, after a uh, while. He might uh, get back home town. Back, get back his home town. But after a while, after a while. Okay, so this is our idea of understanding. Okay, this is based on uh, purely, mostly based on what we think and how we uh, felt based on our mutual feeling, let's say. So this story, what kind of story do you think it is? What kind of story do you think it is? Fable. Ah, fable. Could be a fable as well. Because why? Um, because why it's, it's short. Sure. Because okay. it's short and its characters are animals. Uh huh. Because it is short. It, it, you said it's a fable. Because it has short yes. and it has animal. Yes. But to be a fable, it has to have a moral, a lesson. What do you have any moral and a lesson for this? No. No, right? There is no yes. moral. So could that be a fable? Yes. Without any uh, mor moral. Without any lesson, uh, fable exists? If there is no fable, you know, the main character of fable is means to send a, a message, which is a lesson and, you know, some sort of lesson. So if it doesn't have, fable isn't really fable. So what do you call this one? So... It is not fable. You forgot what was this story? It was a fiction. Ah, you forget that? No. You forgot that for a moment, right? Because we were reading the fiction. Okay. Okay, that's it for today. We're going to continue tomorrow on the story uh, through the uh, through the looking closely as well as the comprehension. Okay. Do you have any questions? Mm. No. No? Okay. So 
Until then, see you tomorrow. We will end uh, our lesson here now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, see Welcome. you guys. Thanks. See you.